talking to the moon. All these people right here tonight, fighting, fighting, fighting. Ladies and gentlemen, I am a 37 year old man with multiple failed relationships. So I'm gonna be a super expert on what not to do if you want a healthy, loving relationship. So I do have a wonderful girlfriend that I trapped under my spell, but it just took too dang long to get here and I do not want that to happen to you. But I wanna tell you all of my failures, all the things that I did, and what got me there so you don't have to follow in my lonely, lonely footsteps. I've seen a lot of people make the same exact mistakes and you know, me, I'm like a Captain save -a joe I wanna reach out and I wanna save your soul because there's too many lonely incels out there. And maybe you're not a lonely incel, maybe you're just curious and you just wanna see how I failed and this is really funny to you. Either way, I just wanna help people. Please do not make the same mistakes I did and if you are currently doing them, maybe this will help you notice. Mexico always has a special place in our hearts because that was the only way I could get Hannah through the United States of America. Look, they labor each other. My heart used to be this. Number one, commitment issues. Now I see this happening from people who are super duper too clingy and committed to the point where like they make everybody run away from them. And also I see the opposite of commitment issues where you're just so afraid of commitment that you can't be committed to anybody in the world. Having commitment issues is like seeing a dirty water fountain at the park. You're questioning it because it's like, yo, I'm thirsty as hell. Don't know if I should drink out of this. Is it gonna get me some kind of disease? A real man says, fuck this shit, and he puts his real mouth on it. Uh-huh, uh-huh. He jumps in with faith and says, I take you into my arms. I love you very much. Early on, when I started getting interested in girls in like junior high, high school and stuff, I would scare them away because I would go on dates and then just already want to marry them. You gotta take things slow. Like Do you even know this person? Maybe it's all in your head that you're totally in love and it's not reciprocated, but you also might be dealing with some kind of inner trauma where like, hey, maybe your mom or dad abandoned you. And so you're searching to replace that love that you've been needing for so many years. And the hard part here is it's very difficult for people people to not only admit, but even see that they're doing this to the partner. Now for commitment issues, there is light at the end of the tunnel. I am in a very loving relationship and it's because I identified what those specific things were and I put in the work to actually try to deal with myself and open myself up to allow love into my life. Mm. Oh man, they should have this in America. Hey guys, today's video is brought to you by Tokyo Treat and Sakura Ko is a monthly subscription box full of authentic traditional Japanese snacks. My favorite part of it is because there's local artisans making these. Shop local, baby. And both are delivered straight from Japan to your door. Every single month they have different themes, so you're gonna get some different exciting surprises. Now let's get to the fun part, okay? Boom, let's see what's inside. <laughs> oh shoot. Oh, boom, strawberry Kit Kat. There's a piece of ramen here. I remember eating this as a little kid. It's a chocolate bun. It's like one of the best pastries ever. But I know everybody was curious about this. Okay, here we go. Strawberry Kit Kat. Mmm! Oh man, they should have this in America! This really caught my attention. Ice cream, baby. Mmm! Mmm! <laughs> Delicious. They really pack this to the root. Oh my god! This tastes like a melted strawberry ice cream. Guys, this is so cool. Oh, I remember eating this as a child! Now, what I personally love about these snack boxes is it's an awesome way to show and share Japanese culture all over the world. Me, personally, being Japanese American, I feel more accepted into the mainstream and I feel like I can share this with y'all. Now, the Sakura Ko box is much more traditional. Okay, let's go. Oh, oh! Oh my God. Okay, in Japan, they do a lot of tea time and I remember eating this bread with my grandma. Oh! Oh my goodness, me and my mama, we love this one. In memory of my grandma, this is how she used to drink the tea. Ah. We're gonna go old school. What is called anko, red bean. 
Mmm. And this is why the booklet's pretty cool. Even my Japanese butt didn't even know what it was. Okay, see? Mini Anko. Now, I've been eyeballing this one. It's the Strawberry Rich Bamu Kuchin. This one has a hole in the middle. Mmm. Wow. They really packed this to the roof, baby. Wow. It's like endless. It just keeps going and going. Now, if you never had anything like this before, you can't read what's on these snacks. It's a bit intimidating. Do not worry. There is a booklet inside every single one of these boxes to explain every single one of these snacks and you can learn a little bit about Japanese culture. It takes all of the wondering out of the equation and you can enjoy these while you're reading like, hmm, that's so cool. Ultimately, just look at how many snacks they packed into these two little boxes. I'm also gonna hook you up with something special for a Tokyo treat, okay? If you want an extra Kit Kat, do this. I want you to click the link for the Tokyo treat link right there, yeah, and use the code Kit Kat 22 as written right here, and you're gonna get a bonus Kit Kat in your first Tokyo treat box. But that's not all, baby. There's an awesome hookup right here for the Sakura Ko box. Same thing. Look at the description box. There's a link right there for the Sakura Ko. Use the code Taiga and get a bonus Japanese home goodie for your first box of Sakura Ko, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, don't force love with the wrong person. Just because you love somebody does not mean that you can be compatible with them. And this is true even in non-romantic relationships, right? Like sometimes even in friendships and sometimes in family ships, you have someone that you absolutely care about, but then you realize it's difficult to get along with them all the time and you guys don't like the same things and it's you figure out that maybe, you know, you guys aren't meant to hang out all the time or whatever it is. Because if you don't grow up with great examples and role models, you you don't know what standard to follow. Everywhere around you, you're like, who do I follow? If everyone's broken up and divorced, I don't even know. As time goes on, nothing clicks and you keep fighting and it just doesn't work. And you try to sacrifice who you really are. Before you know it, both people are unhappy. They just stay in this forever. And inside of that unit, it's a miserable failing relationship. Compatibility is like, I would say, follow the rule of majority. This person isn't gonna agree with everything that you like, that's unrealistic. Compatibility doesn't mean I'll learn to love you or I'll learn to accept you. It means I really like everything about you. The shitty parts, the great parts, the bad parts, everything. Stop trying to force people to what your virtues are and what your morals are, what you believe people should be in a relationship because there is millions and billions of people out there for your choosing, but do not sacrifice and compromise who you are inside, right? You know, you get a new house together or whatever and you're like, I want a blue. No, no, I want a green wall. Whatever, they both tacky and I don't want this for you guys. And if you guys are in it, get the hell out of it right now. Don't let the love in your heart die like this tree. Make it live like those healthy trees. Next is self-awareness. Work through your shit before you put all your projections and bullshits and insecurities on the other person, such as me. Do I know that I'm walking through the forest like a wizard with a wand in my hand? Yes, I have that self-awareness because a lot of people out there have no idea they're walking in the forest waving around a wand. It's easier to blame other people for all of your issues than it is to look deeply and say, what the fuck is happening to me? And many of us make this mistake, men, women, grandmas and grandpas alike, because we have this thing called ego. And what the ego does is it protects us from ruining our sense of reality. A lot of us have an idea of what we think reality is. So what the ego does is it protects us from seeing maybe how we damage other people because we can't face the music and we can't face the reality of hurting the people that we love. And we do not wanna be the reason why we annoy people, push people away and all this shit. But self-awareness isn't just knowing your faults and your triggers and all the negative things. It's also knowing what you want, knowing what makes you happy, knowing all the things that you enjoy. When you know your limitations, when you know who you are, when you know what you like, when you know what you don't like, when you know what kind of stuff you do that can be damaging or annoying to other people, then you can start observing yourself in third person. You're not just responding and reacting to impulses and doing crazy shit and blaming other people. You start to feel positive. You start to feel strong. And that is the goal of the game, people. Next on the list 
is self-love. Shout outs to Daniel Sloss because in his stand-up, he said, you don't love yourself yet, so you hire someone else to do it for you. A lot of the times you get into a relationship, you don't really know yourself, you don't got the self-awareness, you don't even know what you love, and you also don't even love yourself. So what ends up happening is you're like, maybe this person will fill me up. But what ends up happening is it'll all catch up to you because that infatuation will fade. All of the things that made you feel great will fade. You'll start seeing all the stuff that's maybe negative about them because no human being is perfect, okay? And, uh, and me being tired right now, walking up this steep ass hill is symbolism. This workout is like a shitty relationship. You can keep fighting and fighting to make it work. But if you don't stop to watch what's happening, you will burn yourself out. And being able to know who thyself is and understand how to work this experience that we call life in relationships with emotions and such feelings. I think now what's happening is people have a chance, a fighting chance to have an awesome loving relationship. And when this information wasn't so readily available, a lot of our fathers, grandparents, a lot of the males, they didn't have this opportunity to freaking enjoy life in this sense and have a loving relationship or even have the answers to fix the issues that they went through and then they died. Having standards and having things that you want in a person is great, all right? But make sure you don't have these crazy ass expectations and you try to mold them to be the person you want them to be because that's what I did. You know what? They say that you could never turn a stripper into a housewife. But these days with OnlyFans, that dream can become a reality. So I get all of my relationship advice from memes on Instagram, and this one really spoke to me because this one was like, ladies, sleep with your man, and in the morning, find out what kind of family they are. Are they the marathon early at 5 a.m. kind of family? Or are they the mimosas and brunch kind of family? Because that is the type of person you're gonna be with, okay? I had a friend where their imagination of what they thought the relationship was overrode the reality of it. They're arguing all the time. They're not having a great time. They fucking hate each other, but he's hoping one day that she will love him. And it's not gonna fucking happen. And I think this all came to be because his expectations and his imagination is what, and what he wanted her to be was not what she was, okay? Not at all one bit. He was absolutely slapped in the face with those vagina lips and then fucking put under a spell. But it's not even her fault. She's authentically who she is, but it's his fault for imagining and wishing she was someone else. Wow, look at the city lights is coming out. It's gonna be dark as mother hell. There's millions and billions of people out there all going through very similar experiences, some awful, some great. Obviously most people not so great because the divorce rate is extremely high and they don't fucking know what the hell they're doing. And what we're trying to do here is not continue this cycle. I'm telling you guys right now, take it from me, a man who had multiple failed relationships and didn't know what the hell he was doing, I would say that maybe I am probably the worst person you could probably listen to, but I just enjoy this camaraderie we have. And I'm really glad that you come to my channel and I love you guys very much. And uh, take it with a grain of salt of what I say. You know, I do fuck around a big times. All I wanna do is maybe share my life with you. We connected and I was able to give you a little bit of value. That's what it's all about, you know, the community being able to share some of the things that I did and hopefully you guys don't have to take so dang long to find an awesome, loving, healthy relationship. And before I lose another loving relationship to the elements, I will sign off to you with a big welcome to Costco. I love you. Peace, babies. Chuck E. Cheese for my birthday. Chuck E. Chuck E. Chuck E. Cheese for my birthday. Chuck E. Chuck E. Chuck E. Cheese for my birthday. Chuck E. Cheese for my birthday. Birthday. Chuck E. Cheese. Birthday. Chuck E. Chuck E. Chuck E. Cheese for my birthday. Chuck E. Chuck E. Chuck E. Cheese for my birthday. Chuck E. Cheese for my birthday. Birthday. Chuck E. Cheese.